Today we're focusing on one of the most advanced and one of the most controversial warships in the Royal Navy, the Type 45 Daring Class Destroyer. The Type 45s are a cornerstone of the Royal Navy's future. When first conceived, these ships were hailed as world beaters, packed with revolutionary technology, but the journey hasn't been smooth sailing. A critical design flaw has crippled their effectiveness, forcing them to spend most of their service life alongside at their home base of Portsmouth. This has led to a class-wide, multi-million pound rescue mission. The Type 45s were born from the ashes of the cancelled Trinational Common New Generation Frigate Programme with partners France and Italy. The UK pressed ahead by itself, needing a vessel that could shield the fleet, particularly the new Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers from even the most sophisticated aerial threats. The result is a truly imposing warship, at 152.4 metres long, displacing around 8,000 tonnes, the Type 45s are the largest and most powerful destroyers ever built for the Royal Navy. Their sleek, stealthy design reduces their radar signature, but it's what's up top and inside that truly sets them apart. The heart of the Type 45 is the principal anti-air missile system, known in Royal Navy service as Sea Viper. This system is a revolution in technology, dominated by two incredibly advanced and powerful radars. First, you have the BAE Systems Samson Multifunction Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar. That distinctive, often described spiked ball or Dalek head sitting atop the main mast is phenomenally capable. It can automatically detect and track hundreds, some say up to 2,000, distinct air and surface targets simultaneously. From sea skimming missiles to high flying aircraft out to a range of around 400 kilometers. Backing up Samson is a Talus S1850M long range radar. This is a massive D band radar providing 360 degree long range air surveillance, also out to around 400 kilometers. It can track up to 1,000 contacts and is designed to pick up even small, stealthy targets, giving the ship incredible situational awareness and early warning. It even has a declared capability to detect and track objects in the upper atmosphere, a crucial element for future ballistic missile defence systems. And what does the Sea Viper fire? The Aster missile family. Originally, the Type 45s were equipped with a mix of Aster 15 short to medium range missiles and Aster 30 medium to long range missiles. These are launched from a 48 cell Silver A50 vertical launch system just forward of the bridge. The Aster missiles are incredibly agile, capable of pulling high G maneuvers to even intercept supersonic, jinking anti ship missiles. The combination of these advanced radars and missiles meant that a single Type 45 could, in theory, defend a wide area, coordinating the air picture and protecting not just herself, but an entire naval task group. They were, by design, amongst the best air defence destroyers in the world. However, as magnificent as the combat systems were, the Type 45s were built around an ultimately flawed implementation of its advanced propulsion system, the integrated electric propulsion. In the Type 45s, power is generated by two Rolls-Royce WR21 advanced gas turbines and, originally, two diesel generators. This electricity then powers two electric motors which turn the propellers. The WR21 gas turbines themselves were cutting edge, incorporating an intercooler and recuperator to improve fuel efficiency. And herein lay the problem. The Northrop Grumman designed intercooler unit, a critical component for cooling air before it enters the recuperator, proved to be unreliable, particularly in warm waters like the Persian Gulf. When operating at high ambient temperatures, the intercooler couldn't cope. This would leave the WR21 gas turbines failing to provide sufficient power, or even tripping out altogether. The ship's diesel generators were then expected to pick up the load, 
but it became apparent that the original diesel generator sets were not powerful enough to provide the resilience needed for all ship systems, including propulsion and the power-hungry combat systems. The consequences were dire. Reports emerged of Type 45s losing all power, effectively becoming dead in the water in strategically vital and potentially hostile environments. The Royal Navy and the UK government had a serious problem on their hands. The billion pound destroyers were, at times, left powerless. The solution to the Type 45's unfortunate power and propulsion issues came in the form of the Power Improvement Project, or PIP. This is part of a wider initiative established in 2014 to enhance the overall reliability and resilience of the Daring class. The core of the PIP is a fairly drastic but necessary change to the ship's power generation setup. The two original diesel generators simply weren't up to the task of providing sufficient backup or alternative power when the WR21s faulted or when the electricity load was very high. The PIP involved cutting open the hull of each Type 45 and replacing those two diesel generators with three more powerful MTU Series 4000 diesel generators, the same engines as those set to power the Type 26s. This significantly increases the total diesel power generation capacity, providing greater redundancy and ensuring the ships can maintain essential services, including propulsion at reasonable speeds and combat system functionality, even if one or both gas turbines are unavailable. With the fundamental power issues being addressed, the Type 45s are now undergoing a massive combat capability upgrade, primarily through a program of upgrade to Sea Viper and the introduction of a truly futuristic weapon, the Dragonfire Laser. One of the most significant changes in the near term is the addition of 24 dedicated vertical launch cells for the common anti-air modular missile, known as Sea Scepter in RN service. Sea Scepter is already in service on the Type 23 frigates and is destined for the Type 26 and Type 31 frigates. It's a highly agile, radar-guided missile, effective against a wide range of airborne threats, including aircraft, drones, and supersonic anti-ship missiles. It uses a cold launch system where the missile is ejected from the canister by gas before the motor ignites, reducing the stress to the ship. The Aster-15 missile, which provided shorter range defence, will be phased out, with Sea Scepter taking over the inner layer defence role. All 48 of the original VLS cells can now be dedicated to the much longer ranged and more capable Aster-30 missiles. This boosts the Type 45's total missile complement from 48 to a much more formidable 72 missiles. Sea Scepter is also considerably cheaper, meaning it's more appropriate cost-wise to utilise these against drones. The Aster 30 itself is also being upgraded. The Royal Navy is acquiring the Aster Block 1 variant. This version features an improved warhead and updated software significantly enhancing its effectiveness, particularly against faster, more manoeuvrable targets, and crucially, against short and medium-range anti-ship ballistic missiles. The Type 45 sensor suite is also critical here. The S1850M long-range radar, with its ability to detect and track targets in the upper atmosphere, play a vital role in providing early warning and initial cueing for ballistic missile threats. The Samson radar then takes over for precision tracking and guiding the Aster Block 1 missiles to intercept. Recent tests have validated the Sea Viper system's ability to engage challenging, high-speed targets, with HMS Dragon successfully shooting down a supersonic missile in a test off Scotland as part of a NATO drill in May 2025. HMS Diamond also reportedly engaged and destroyed a medium-range ballistic missile target during her operations in the Red Sea, showcasing the system's growing capabilities. It's important to note the distinctions in the Aster missile versions. A more advanced Aster 30 Block 1 NT missile 
with an extended range beyond 150 kilometers and a higher intercept ceiling is being developed by France and Italy. Whilst the UK has expressed interest, the current confirmed upgrade for the Royal Navy's Type 45s is the Aster 30 Block 1. This version still represents a massive leap in capability, making the Type 45 one of the few warship classes in the world with a credible anti-ship ballistic missile defence. HMS Diamond is slated to be the first to achieve initial operating capability with the upgraded Sea Viper package, including the Sea Scepter cells and enhanced Aster 30s. Perhaps the most eye-catching upgrade coming to the Type 45s is the Dragonfire laser directed energy weapon. The UK has been developing Dragonfire for several years and it has recently announced that the system will be fitted to four of the six Type 45 destroyers starting in 2027. This is a landmark development putting the Royal Navy at the forefront of this technology. Dragonfire offers several key advantages. It has an incredible low cost per shot Think pounds sterling rather than hundreds of thousands or even millions for a missile. It has a theoretically unlimited magazine as long as there is power available and thanks to the PIP the Type 45s will have more power. It offers precise, scalable effects capable of dazzling sensors or physically destroying targets like drones or fast attack craft. The speed of light engagement also means that it's almost impossible to evade once targeted. Alongside these major weapon upgrades, the ships are also receiving enhancements to their ballistic protection, further improving their survivability. One of the most rapidly evolving threats in modern warfare is the rise of the cheap and increasingly sophisticated unmanned system, both in the air, on the surface, and also submarine. We've seen their devastating impact in conflicts around the world, particularly their use in swarm attacks designed to overwhelm a ship's defences. So how does an upgraded Type 45, a vessel primarily designed for high-end air warfare, cope in this asymmetrical threat? The answer lies in its layered defence capabilities and its adaptability. Firstly, the Type 45's powerful radars are more than capable of detecting and tracking small, agile drone targets, providing crucial early warning. The combat management system can then assess these threats and allocate the most appropriate effectors. For engaging the UAVs, this is where the Sea Viper Evolution upgrades become even more critical. The new Sea Scepter missiles, with their agility and ability to engage multiple targets rapidly, are exceptionally well suited to countering swarm dro of drones. A volley of sea scepters could decimate an incoming wave of UAVs. For close in defence against swarms, the Type 45s have several options. Each Type 45 is armed with two close in weapon systems, that's the Falnix Gatling guns. These radar guided high rate of fire cannons provide a last line of defence against incoming missiles and can be devastatingly effective against drones. The ships are typically fitted with two 30mm DS-30M Mark II automated small calibre guns. These offer flexible response against small surface threats and can also engage slow moving aerial targets like drones. There is also a 4.5 inch main gun. While primarily designed for naval gunfire support and engaging larger surface targets, the main gun can also play a role, particularly against larger USVs. The Royal Navy is actively training for this threat. In early 2025, HMS Dauntless conducted Exercise Sharpshooter off the Welsh coast. During this exercise, the destroyer successfully fended off hundreds of real and virtual drone attacks, including Banshee aerial drones and Hammerhead uncrewed surface vehicles, using her Falnix, 4.5 inch guns, 30mm guns and an embarked Wildcat with Martlet missiles. This exercise specifically mimicked the kind of threats currently being seen in hotspots like the Red Sea. And of course, looking to the near future, the Dragonfire laser will be an absolute game changer in the anti-drone role. Its precision, 
low cost per shot and deep magazine make it an ideal weapon for systematically destroying individual drones in a swarm without expending expensive missiles. So while no system is impenetrable, the upgraded Type 45s will possess a formidable multi-layered defense against drone swarms, combining advanced sensors, traditional gunnery, and highly capable systems like C-Scepter and soon cutting edge laser technology. As for larger targets, since the retirement of the Harpoon anti-ship missile, the Type 45s have been without a dedicated anti-surface ship weapon. Forthcoming refits will bring the naval strike missile into service with the Type 45s. Either new systems or those transferred from recently decommissioned Type 23 frigates will be installed. These missiles will also have a land attack capability. Now let's look at the current status of each of the six Type 45s. HMS Daring is currently undergoing a significant refit, which includes her power improvement project. The PIP installation itself was completed at Camelard at the end of 2022, and the ship returned to Portsmouth in January 2023 for the completion of her extensive refit and regeneration. She is not yet operational, and is expected to return to the fleet in early 2026. HMS Dauntless is operational and has completed her PIP. As of May 2025, she is deployed with the HMS Prince of Wales Carrier Strike Group to the Indo-Pacific region, fulfilling the crucial air defence role for CSG-25. HMS Diamond is currently undergoing her PIP, which commenced in late 2024. As part of this refit, she should also receive her Sea Scepter and Naval Strike Missile outfit. As of May 2025, she is out of service with this work ongoing, and her return to operations is anticipated for 2027. HMS Dragon is operational, having recently completed an extensive maintenance period and her PIP upgrades. The PIP work was undertaken at Portsmouth and was completed by late 2024, early 2025. In May 2025, she successfully participated in live fire exercise for Midable Shield 25. HMS Defender is currently out of service as she commenced a three-year major refit in July 2023, which includes her PIP. As part of this refit, she should also receive Sea Scepter and Naval Strike Missile. With her PIP currently being performed, her return to service is anticipated for mid-2026. HMS Duncan is operational, having returned to Portsmouth in early December 2024 following her deployment. As of May 2025, she is in a maintenance and regeneration period. Her PIP is yet to be performed and is scheduled to take place next, between 2025 and 2028. As part of this refit, she should also receive Sea Scepter and Naval Strike Missile. The story of the Type 45 destroyers is an interesting one. It's a testament to ambitious design, the harsh realities of technological teething problems, and the determination to engineer solutions. From a platform whose potential was hamstrung by a critical flaw, the Type 45s are becoming the truly world-leading warships that they have always intended to be, bristling with cutting-edge radar technology, a significantly expanded and more versatile missile arsenal, and soon, the revolutionary capability of directed energy weapons. These are no longer just anti-air warfare destroyers, they are evolving into multi-mission platforms capable of high-end warfighting, ballistic missile defence, and countering asymmetrical threats of the modern age. They are and will remain for years to come, be absolutely crucial to the Royal Navy's ability to project power and protect UK's interests around the globe, especially as the vital guardians of the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. What are your thoughts on the Type 45's transformation? What future capabilities do you think are most crucial? Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow.